trade. So break it down for us. So Dallas acquires, I'm told, Willie Cauley Stein from Golden State for a 2020 second round draft pick. Dallas was in the market for a center when they lost Dwight Powell earlier in the week to a ruptured Achilles. And now that's another team out of the marketplace potentially for Andre Drummond, who is certainly the preeminent center on the trade block right now. Yeah, and we know Willie Colley Stein's one of those rim protecting centers. Uh, let's talk about some other centers. 13 days away from the trade deadline. Uh, what are some updates that you have, Kevin Love and Andre Drummond? Well, Kevin Love right now, there is not a real market for him. And there's I think, an increasing belief with the Cavaliers, with Kevin Love uh, and, and his team that he may have to play the rest of this season out uh, and get into uh, the summertime, get into around the draft, around free agency, before Cleveland may be able to find a trade for him. He's still got a couple years left on his deal, three years, $90 million. And then Andre Drummond, he can opt out of his contract, become a free agent. Detroit would love to get a first round pick for him. You know, that's something they're still looking for in the marketplace. A team like New York, who has the cap space and might have interest in signing him this summer, doesn't have to trade for him now if they, they, they think they could sign him in July. Yeah, Andre Drummond, 36 double doubles on the season. It's always interesting to hear you talk about the market for centers in the NBA as we continue to approach the trade dread deadline. Uh, now, Woj, you worked on an incredible story uh, this season, and it features Joe Ingles of the Utah Jazz Guard, who his entire life has changed just because of a diagnosis, but he's using what his family has gone to to create awareness and grow a passion for what his son is going through. I told Renee the first day I met her I was going to marry her and obviously with that was was wanting a family and um, yeah it was just a, the, the most amazing feeling getting to hold them and I guess see what we created. In July 2016 when twins Jacob and Milla arrived Renee was a top netballer in Australia and Joe had a starting role on the Utah Jazz. Two continents, two careers, and the children seem to be flourishing. Miller's kind of go-getter, wants to, to do everything, be involved in anything. Ready? Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Done. She's such a, a big personality. Jacob, he loves to know how everything works. <laughs> he loves to relax and watch TV like his dad. Loves cars, and he's certainly our gentle and affectionate little giant. The Ingles were told over and over, don't compare the twins, but that was inevitable. And the differences in the two-year-old sibling's development became impossible to miss. Jacob, we didn't have any communication. Um, he wouldn't look us in the eye. He certainly wasn't making the same sounds and words and noises that Miller was. Just to see Jacob um, a kind of progressing not as quick was, was when we started to, to have some concerns. We found that he was really socially isolated, so we'd go to play groups or activities and all of the kids were down one and enjoying the activity and Jacob was down the other and enjoying an activity on his own. In January 2019, the Ingalls were delivered a diagnosis, autism. It's one of those things that I guess as a, as a parent, you, you never want to go through. I'm glad that I had Renee's support because I, I was a mess through the whole thing. The car ride home was really tough. I don't think Joe or I spoke. Um, we just held hands in the front of the car. And I just kept looking back at Jacob going, well, what does this actually mean? For Jacob, it meant this. More than 20 hours a week in developmental, <laughs> behavioral, and speech therapy. Touch your head. Touch your head. Good boy. Okay, ready. I remember ready. driving out of here and going to games and, and crying the whole way there, knowing, like thinking in my head, like, what am I, what am I doing? I, I shouldn't be playing. I need to be there for Renee. I need to be there for Jacob. I need to be there for Miller. It still for me was the hardest kind of three months of, of our lives trying to Trying to focus on basketball. Ingles had a little hitch on the shot there, and Stevenson the rebound. Which is probably why I, I played so bad during that stretch, but it, it was so irrelevant to me at the time. 
I felt like he had a heavy heart. So when he told me, it, it kind of made sense. He was at a little bit of a loss. The support that we got when we came out was something we could have never, never even came close to asking for. I think over time, especially as he began to communicate more, I was able to you know, get better for him. It was like a, a huge weight was lifted off his shoulder. Once you know, he kind of let, let it out, he didn't feel like he was alone. Jazz people, get on your feet and help us support the families affected by autism by waving your rally towel. Let's turn awareness into action. That spring, the Jazz had their annual autism awareness night. The support that, you know, just the, the community showed for him on that night, you know, was huge. And, you know, we had a lot of teammates, you know, wear the shoes and it, it just showed that, you know, he was loved by everybody. I still remember walking into games and practice and, and not talking to anybody. To go from that feeling to having 20,000 people, um, not just supporting me, but supporting autism all around the world. It's probably my favorite NBA game I've ever played in. After months of therapy, Jacob started to show progress. We've gone from a little boy who wanted to sit in the corner and play with his cars to a little boy that kisses and cuddles you and playing with his peers and interacting with his adults. He's come so far. <laughs> it is just unreal and um, eye contact. The other day walking in, waving, saying hello. Hi. We hadn't heard our son's voice for two and a bit years, whatever it was, up to that point, and now starting to hear his voice. For me, it was like holding up a trophy. Well, it's incredible here, the progress of young Jacob, but it's estimated that one in 59 children is actually diagnosed with autism. Woj, you spent time with the Ingalls family. What is it that they want people to know or understand about this disease? Well, what a challenge certainly it is for families and what a financial challenge it can be. Joe and Renee are in a position where they could afford the treatment. They know a lot of families can't, so they've been committed to trying to raise money to defray the cost for other families. And listen, any given night on the road in the NBA, you'll see Joe Ingles before a game, fans who uh, you know might have autistic children, you know, they'll call Joe's name out, they'll have him come talk to their kids, talk to them. And, and he takes great pride in wherever he goes in the league. Uh, you know, to carry that cause with him. Yeah, he's certainly raising awareness. We've seen the, the rally towels and the entire game being dedicated to children with autism spectrum disorder. Um, Adrian Wojnarowski here for our Woj Report. And remember, all things Woj you can find on the Woj Pod anywhere you listen to your podcasts. And we are just about 20 minutes away from the Clippers taking on the Heat. Montrez Harrell, Lou Will, that's what we're used to seeing coming off the bench and making a difference. We'll see the difference they make tonight. That's chicken. your right. Take care of your chicken. And keep, like, I, I've learned that, you know, a lot of guys when they retire, it's kind of like you're trying to find yourself. And it's kind of been a good break to kind of experience what that's been like and kind of get that schedule right and learning what you want. How do you get your mentals right? Uh, I've been meditating a little bit. Um, I do some uh, boxing, which is really good, and uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of Pilates. And you can do some uh, meditation while you're in Pilates as well. It's tough. Okay. Well, you mentioned the young boys, and there's not one younger probably than Zion that's making a big deal right now in the NBA. You're making your NBA countdown debut. How about Zion on Wednesday? That's what he did against the Spurs, and we had to wait four months to see him take the court, but it was pretty much worth the wait. Zion Williamson, he makes the debut and scores 22 points in 18 minutes, guys. 17 of those came in the fourth quarter, and there he is getting ready to play in just his second game of his very, very young NBA season, but look at that. Four for four from three-point. I mean, I don't think you could imagine the the reaction that we would see from him taking the court and really the way that he played and I know that something that impressed you was his ability to shoot the three ball yeah I wasn't expecting that and I think for him he just it looks like he's playing with confidence mm -hmm. now one thing I won't do is look for him to have these awesome amazing nights every single night it's the NBA teams are going to adjust teams are going to start scouting him but it was good to see him play with some confidence the one thing that I've always said about him I saw it at Duke he was a really good facilitator and really good at attacking the basket and finding people, finding open guys. He was going to create shots for those guys, and he compliments the, the other guys on the team. Four guys going to play a lot of minutes at the four and five. Zion has a handle. And as you mentioned, he creates for his teammates as well. And 
it's refreshing and you had this in Golden State when your best players or your most talented players aren't ball dominant. Mm -hmm. He's going to still give hustle plays, die for loose balls, get blocks, get steals. But yet and still, he's not going to dominate the ball, which is going to allow Ingram to get off, which is going to allow Ball to still get his assist. I like that Zion Williamson has returned to this team and gave him a legit chance to make the playoffs. I'm with you, Jay. And it's going to be fascinating to watch because Zion doesn't ask for it, mm -hmm. but the attention that comes with Zion. I mean, think about the Nielsen ratings went up like 88%. <laughs> right? Like that's, that's incredible. Like 2.75 at the peak. million people watched that game they had the other night against the Spurs. How will other young players deal with the attention when things start to happen throughout the course of the season? How this chemistry will ultimately mesh or not mesh is going to be great to watch. And I think the players, the young players in New Orleans, they see that Zion is bringing attention to a team that otherwise would not get it. Mm -hmm. Brandon Ingram is a very soft-spoken player who's had a career year. Zion being there, the attention they're getting is going to raise Ingram's uh, 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 a platform. There's no question about that. He is going to be uh, it, that might help him make an all-star team. Look, that so, can, yeah. boys, that can raise your stock. That can also hurt your stock if something goes wrong or you don't react the right way, too. I'm not saying that's going to happen for anybody, but yeah. just the possibility of yes. that, right? Well, I, I think I will say that with Brandon Ingram, when he came out the gate early on and that contract talks were kind of floating out there, what he's valued at, I think he was pressing a little bit. He was. When he started relaxing, he was getting easy 30s, which is amazing. And I think that Zion is actually a perfect complement to him. He won't disrupt his touches. He won't disrupt him getting to his spots. They're going to feed off each other. And when I look at Zion, I see like a young Charles Barkley. Mm. Doesn't have the shooting touch quite yet, although he did make four threes. Mm -hmm.